Hey guys, today's tutorial features the new Everlasting Liquid Lipstick by Kat Von D. This is in the shade Lovesick, which is amazing. I recently went to Sephora and swatched all of their liquid lipsticks and I fell in love with this one. This is a beautiful mauve rosy nude shade. I am a huge fan of mauve rosy shades. I feel as though those are the shades that complement me best personally and I love them especially for the fall season. So this is a great transition shade for fall if you're not looking for something too vampy or too loud. This is the perfect neutral shade for you. This is the first time that I purchased a liquid lipstick from the Kat Von D line and so far I'm absolutely loving this liquid lipstick. The consistency is great. It stays on for so long. Obviously, if you're going to be eating or drinking a lot, that's going to affect how long that your liquid lipstick lasts. But in general, this stuff stays on, which is awesome, especially for my girls or boys that are working, going to school, or going to be gone all day, and you don't really want to be touching up your lips a lot throughout the day. The only negative that I can think of at the moment is that the formula is a bit drying on your lips. What I like to do to kind of combat that is moisturize my lips ahead of time. One thing that I'm really loving about the liquid lipstick formula is that you can overdraw your lips a little bit and it's not super obvious. Like you know when you overline your lips with lip liner or lipstick and you can see it a mile away. But with this liquid lipstick formula, it dries so matte and beautifully that you really can't tell that you're overlining your lips. If you love playing around with fuller lips and you don't want to go and get injections or plastic surgery, this is a great way to be creative and to explore having more of a fuller pout. So yeah, if you guys want to see how I achieved this look and how I incorporated this new liquid lipstick, then let's get started. Hey guys, we're starting off today's video with a little bit of moisturizer for the lips. We're going to be working with a very drying liquid lipstick formula, so moisturizing is key. I apologize in advance in the state of my eyebrows. They are just looking like a hot mess. Um, I moved not too long ago and need to find an amazing eyebrow threader and I haven't been able to. So I've been kind of doing them myself, which is why they look kind of a mess. I am also recovering from a cold, so my voice is super deep. But um, anyway, so I start with the same foundation. It's that Too Faced foundation that I've been absolutely loving. I blend it in with this flat top kabuki. That's just the best way for me to get a really nice, natural looking, flawless finish. In an attempt to get these brows looking right, I have experimented with now using shadows to shape and fill them in. So this is a eyeshadow from the Lorac Pro Palette in the shade Taupe. And I'm using a brush to apply some to the eyebrows to shape them and then to fill them in and help them appear a little bit more full. There are a lot of different products that you can use to help shape and fill in your eyebrows. I typically use a brow whiz or a brow pencil uh, made by Anastasia and again you can use shadows to fill them in or you can use a tinted brow gel if you have really nice shaped full eyebrows and you just need to you know keep the hairs in place a tinted brow gel is definitely the way to go now I have some sparse areas that I need to fill in so I decided to start using some of the shadow and I love using the shadow because I feel that it naturally makes you look like you have fuller eyebrows Whereas when you use an eyebrow pencil, you're essentially drawing in the hairs and you know drawing into the sparse areas. It just doesn't look as natural. So that's why I've opted to use the shadow to help them appear a little bit more full and I'm really enjoying it. 
For the eyeshadow, I'm going to be building around this beautiful mauve lip color. So I'm going to be putting down a base shadow. This is just nice to have as you transition, as you move from shadow to shadow. There's something in the background that helps the transition look smooth. I'm blending the shadow into the crease and I'm using a big fluffy brush. You can be quite sloppy with this process because the shadow is so light. Now I'm applying a shade that's a little bit lighter than the beautiful mauve shade that we're going to put on next, but a little bit darker than the transition shade. So this is a beautiful light brown shade that's going to give that crease just a little bit more depth. Now I'm onto the beautiful mauve shade that pairs perfectly with the mauve lips. This is Dusty Rose from Anastasia. It's one of my favorite shadows. I just love this color in general. It's just so beautiful. And it's such a wearable shade too. You can wear this in the middle of the day. You could wear it out at night, smoke it out a little bit. This shade goes well with so many different eye colors too, especially if you have blue eyes. This shade will make your eyes pop. This is a shadow where you can really build on to the intensity. I want it to look exactly like it looks in the pan. So I'm gonna just continue putting more and more on until I achieve that beautiful mauve shade. Here I'm just taking a big fluffy brush and blending out as I go so that it doesn't look too concentrated in one area. I'm using this cream shade to brighten up the inner corners a little bit. They can look a little bit dull. Um, and as you can see, when I apply the shadow, it just really brightens up that area. And I chose to go with the cream colored shadow because it complements that mauve shadow really well, as opposed to maybe like a stark white shadow. Um, it just wouldn't transition as nicely as the cream shadow does. I'm adding this MAC Loose Pigment in the shade Tan to the inner corner and to the center of the eyelid. This pairs perfectly with just the entire look and I wanted to spice it up a little bit. So here I sprayed a little bit of Fix Plus onto my shadow brush and then I just back and forth sweeping motions apply it to the center and inner corner of the eyelid. This is another product where you can build the intensity so the more pigment you pick up and apply to the eye, the more intense that your look is going to be. So it's really up to you. You can be as creative as you'd like with this. To highlight the brow bone, I decided to use a little bit of Max Eyeshadow in Nylon. This is a metallic slash shimmery shade and I chose to use this one instead of the cream color because I felt that the shimmer in nylon complemented the loose pigment that we applied all over the eyelid really well. I'm applying a little bit to the inner corner as well just to even everything out. For today's eyes, I'm going to go with a winged eyeliner with this liquid eyeliner. Um, I think it's made by Sonia Kashuk. It's, it's a pretty solid felt tip eyeliner. It stays on, it doesn't smudge, and it's easy to apply. What are your guys' ride or die liquid liners? Like, what have you been using for years that you love? What are your go-tos? Let me know below. I used to love the Maybelline uh, felt tip liquid liner that was my ride or die for years and years even in high school I think is when I started using it and yeah I just found Sonia Kashuk's and it's they're so similar um but I'm always down to try a new one so let me know what you guys use down below I would love to know
I decided to get glammed up today with some false lashes. These are a, the Ardell Demi Wispies. Um, they're my favorite. They're amazing. I was at the store the other day and spotted them in a five pack and I'm like, yes, throw it in the bag. I'm applying my favorite mascara. This is the Lancome Hypnos Drama Mascara and I'm applying it to my lashes and the falsies. This seals both of them together. Um, if you guys know of any amazing mascara that's similar to Lancome Hypnos Drama or similar to uh, the Benefit in the silver packaging, I think it's the Benefit Their Real Mascara. If you know anything like that, please uh, leave me some info below because I'm looking for a new mascara and I really like these types of mascaras. I love the applicators on both. Both of the applicators just grab onto the lashes and really get that mascara coated and it's just, I don't know, I'm just, um, I'm obsessed. So if you guys have any cool mascaras that you think are similar that I would really like, please leave them down below. I like trying out and playing around with new mascaras. I'm applying the MAC Pro Long Wear Concealer underneath my eyes and I'm dabbing a little bit of the MAC Prep and Prime Concealer in Light Boost. This will brighten things up under there so I will conceal and brighten at the same time using these two products. I'm also going to be blending that out with a beauty blender. Um, this is just the best tool, in my opinion, to get a really nice flawless finish. It just makes everything look so seamless and it doesn't make you look like you have two layers of concealer on. It just blends everything so nicely together. I'm also bringing down some of this product around my nose and any other areas that I want to conceal or brighten up. So I get a little bit of redness around my nose. I tend to bring the product down into that area to cover that up. And I'm going to set everything using my favorite Laura Mercier translucent powder. I use this powder to set my concealer because it seals it. If you've ever worn concealer without having it set for more than, you know, two hours, it does tend to move around your face, especially if you have more of an oily skin. Um, so setting this really helps and it also is a translucent powder with a little bit, a little bit of a yellow tint to it. So it brightens up that area, which is something that I love. You can apply a very sheer amount of powder underneath your eye to set it if that is what you like. I love to have that under eye area super bright. So I will go ahead and layer layers of, um, the powder to get the brightness that I want using one of my favorite bronzers from Estee Lauder to warm up the face a little bit. I'm applying it underneath my cheekbones as I would any contour shade, um, just to bring those cheekbones up, to slim the face a little bit, add a little bit more dimension to the face. And as I'm blending, I'm blending the product up so that I have that really nice and clean contour underneath. I also like bringing that product to my temples. It just warms up the entire face. It balances all of the contour or the warmness. And I just love the way that bronzer and contour shades look on the sides of the temples. I mean, you can really warm up the entire face by just adding a little bit more warmth, a little bit more color to your forehead area. Do you guys love Julian and Jenna? I'm obsessed with their channel. I've watched their vlogs, I watch their main channels, and I love listening to their uh, podcasts. So yeah, I was listening to their podcasts while I was doing this make a look. If you guys aren't already subscribed to them, definitely check them out. It's Jenna and Julian podcast on YouTube. They are amazing. Okay, so I went in and uh, blended everything out using a duo fiber stippling brush, and now I'm gonna cut that contour. So. What I mean by cutting it is just making a really clean line so you can see where the contour ends. Um, I'm achieving this by taking my beauty blender and cutting or applying that product and making a line underneath the contour using my translucent powder. That was a mouthful. So take the powder on a blending brush and create a line right underneath your contour. Simple as that. Leave that on there to kind of set for a little while while you are applying your blush. And then the reason why I like to keep that area set and not blend out the translucent powder is because when I'm applying my blush, it really keeps everything underneath the blush and contour clean. So while you're applying your blush, you can be as sloppy as you want with it because underneath that area is going to stay super nice and clean and defined. I'm applying the same shadows to my lower lash line just to even everything out. 
um, start with a light color just like you did above and then increase to darker shades. That'll keep everything nice and blended and seamless. Once I've applied my blush, I'm ready to go ahead and blend out that translucent powder underneath my contour. So I used the same stippling brush and blended that out. And now I'm putting on lower lash line mascara. A great tip that I've learned throughout the years is to not apply your lower lash line mascara until you are completely done applying product to the under eye area and to the lower lash line. So when you're done applying your concealer and you're done applying your translucent powder or your setting powder and you're finished with the lower lash line shadow, that is when you want to go ahead and apply your mascara. That way it just keeps everything really nice and neat and it keeps from any of the product getting into the lashes after you've coated them with mascara. So here I'm applying highlight and I've been doing this new thing with the tip of my nose where I apply the highlight very concentrated to the tip of my nose. As you can tell, it just brings that tip up and it brings your nose up so it looks like you have more of a defined tip. Now, I know it's not for everybody, but hey, I love experimenting and being creative with makeup and I love how it can just transform your face for, you know, one to four hours until you're ready to wash it all off. It's just makeup, y'all. So if you're looking for a way to give yourself a more defined tip or to bring your nose up a little bit, definitely try this trick out. Now it's on to the star of the show, this amazing, amazing liquid lipstick that I'm so in love and obsessed with. This is the Kat Von D Everlasting Liquid Lipstick in Lovesick. It's a beautiful mauve nude shade and I'm just applying it to my, yep, I am feeling this liquid lipstick. It's such a beautiful shade. I think it just compliments everybody, anybody. It's so wearable too, which is what I love. So anyway, I'm just applying it onto the bottom of my lips and then on the top. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, this liquid lipstick formula makes it so easy to play around with the shape and the size of your lips without it looking super obvious. So if you want to overline your lips a little bit, try it out with this liquid lipstick. I'm just applying a couple of coats to get it to the opacity opaqueness it's not opacity it's opaqueness it sounds so weird but i yeah i'm pretty 100 percent sure it's opaqueness to the opaqueness to basically get it as opaque as i prefer anyway this is the final look if you have a chance definitely check out your beauty store give them a swatch she's got an array of amazing shades so i'm sure you'll find one that you love thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye